Okay, hello, Michael Tracy here, TYT. We are in Vista, California, in the San Diego area, where there is being a there's a town hall being held for Daryl Issa, the Republican congressman from this district, um, in absentia. So he's been invited to attend. He has declined to attend, um, as are most Republican members of Congress these days. They're very scared of attending town hall meetings populated by <gasps> their constituents um, to feel concerns. That's a very, um, very risky proposition for them these days. So the constituents took it upon themselves to hold the town hall meeting of their own. They're doing this all across the country. So we are going to view the one happening tonight in Vista. Should be good. So we are at capacity outside this auditorium where the town hall for Daryl Issa is being held in his absence. Um, this lady here is handing out postcards for people to send to whom? To Bill Maher. Um, Daryl now, now, why Bill Maher? That's not, not something that would come to mind. Well, Daryl Issa is going to be on the Bill Maher show Friday night, um, but he won't come here and see his constituents, but he'll go on national television with Bill Maher. And we'd like Bill Maher, we just want Bill to comment on that. What does he think about that? Why would Daryl not speak to us, but he will go on national television with Bill Maher? And what do you think the reason is for his reluctance to come to meetings like this? Well, I think he's afraid of us. He's disappointed so many of us for so long. I mean, he's now he's coming up with some health care reform. He's had eight years to work on that, and he's done nothing. And how did this event come about? Did you, were you involved in the organizing at all, or did you just happen to hear about it? How did no, you hear about I, it? I just got an email about it, and and I from whom? Um, from the um, the people that did the um, the march in January. I signed up with them, and then I was I'm on their mailing list. And I think it's important. I think we need to have our voices heard, and I think we're not getting heard. Okay, so as you can see, the interior of the auditorium where Daryl Issa was invited to show up is packed, filled to capacity. Looks like the fire marshal is not allowing people to get in, but we managed to get in somehow. Wait, wait. Um, and, you know, the excuse that people like ISA have been using is that outside agitators are disrupting these meetings and making them not fruitful exercises in democratic engagement. But I don't see very many obvious agitators here. It seems like everybody is interested in a real exchange. So that's not a valid excuse. Um, I actually made a video earlier today showing how Democrats actually made a similar excuse in 2009 when people showed up to their town halls and were agitated and wanted them wanted to demand accountability. So it's the same situation now. It's not valid for somebody like Issa to decline to show up. So there you have it. Well, uh, what is your theory as to why Daryl Issa is declining to show up to these events? Um, I think he's uh, worried about his um, credentials, his his personal appearance, his reputation. I think he's worried. And it should be a duty for any member of Congress to hold frequent town halls, right? So That's what we think. Yeah. And that would be Democrat or Republican, right? That's right. I mean, it's, it's part of our, his responsibility to speak to his constituents and not just the ones that voted for him. Right. And his excuse could be, and other Republicans have said, outside agitators are showing up to these meetings and being disruptive, and therefore it's not worth attending. I don't really see many agitators here. Do you? No, sir. I've lived in Vista for 30 years. I've been a constituent of Daryl Issa's for as long as he's been a uh, congressman, about 17 years, I believe. So I'm not a paid protester, and I'm not an agitator. But I would like to see things change, and I don't like his voting record. And you are a constituent. You're not an outside agitator, correct? Absolutely. I've been living here for well over 20 years. Because Issa and other Republicans have said that these town halls are being flooded with people from outside the district who just want to cause a disruption, but that wouldn't apply to you, correct? No, not at all. And everybody I've come in contact with the weekly protests at his office, they all are neighbors. You know, we've seen them day in, day out. You can, you can tell. People are pretty passionate about it. And we are now being overrun by chanting, so let's conclude the interview there. Thank you. Wonderful to see all of you here. I'm Reverend Beth Johnson. I'm the minister at Palomar Unitarian Universalist Fellowship here in Vista. I'm currently the co-president of the Interface Center for Worker Justice, and I'm on the steering committee of Faith Leaders for Reproductive Justice. We care about our families and our friends, our health, and our community. How many of you have been at a rally on Tuesday? 
and invest in the poverty rate in the most recent census data was 19.2%. That's compared to 13.8% for the whole county. Um, and what's really striking here in Vista, let me tell you, is the child poverty rate. 31% of children here in the city of Vista are below the federal poverty threshold. And the, the sad thing about that is that that's the federal poverty threshold. That doesn't even really begin to take into account the high cost of living here in San Diego County. So I work as a paramedic in the city of San Diego, and I see every single day people that don't have access to primary care. They end up in the back of my ambulance, and they end up in the back of, in an emergency room. And that's a higher cost to the tax, and that is a higher cost to the taxpayer than uh, if everybody just had access and was guaranteed coverage. Not just access, but guaranteed. I've got, I've got one question for Daryl Issa. Being one of the richest members in our entire government, what gives you the right to take away health care from poor people, having all the, all the benefits in the world? Where is? Where is? Where is? Thank you very much, everybody. Are you a paid protester? Absolutely not. Right. I didn't think so, but a lot of people on the internet have that conspiracy about how these things are being organized, but that's not your experience. Right. I, I'm actually a, an organizer. Okay. I have started a Facebook group for my congressional district that has is nearing 2,000 members. Yep. And I did that because I was concerned about climate change and the, the results of the election, and I just felt like I had to do something. And I started this page and thought, Maybe a few people will join, we'll make some phone calls. <laughs> and a few months later, there's 2,000 people in there. A lot of them helped with organizing this. Are you a paid protester? Absolutely not. In fact, I've been out rallying now for about six six weeks over at the uh, ISA office in Vista, and I live about three blocks away. I work full time, but I take off Tuesdays, so I don't get paid by my job. I actually lose money to go do that, so yeah. So George Soros is not subsidizing your day off. I don't off. even know that guy. <laughs> so what's going on now is not that the meeting is over. What they are attempting to do, or what the organizers are attempting to do, is to have everybody who had been inside the auditorium rotate out, and then the 2,000 approximately people who had been outside looking in are going to try to rotate in. So it's a mass experiment in human movement. You keep saying access to health care not the same as health care. We want health care for everyone. We have all seen the nonpartisan reports. 20 to 30 million people will lose their health care. 40 to 45,000 people a year will die. Congressman, you are obsessed with the fact that Obama's name is on this law. My question is this. If not for the sake of human life, what will it take for you to choose country over party? So the Daryl Issa Town Hall in Vista, California has wrapped up or is wrapping up. Um, Issa himself did not show. It's not a huge surprise. But I think the uses of an event like this, um, or one of the uses, is that really it places pressure on politicians in both parties to hold town hall meetings, in-person town hall meetings. You see a lot of Congress uh, members saying, oh, I held a telephone town hall, or I did some other um, unacceptable replacement for an in-person town hall where you actually engage with constituents phys in physical proximity to you, um, including people who might not be favorably disposed towards you. Um, so that's why in-person town hall meetings are really crucial, and it's cru crucial that con members of Congress uh, uh, be pressured to hold those um, frequently and regularly. Um, obviously, this particular town hall is dominated by liberals, which is not surprising because liberals tend to be the people who are most agitated right now and wanting to uh, uh, get accountability from their elected officials, but really this is a transpartisan issue. Any, any politician should feel this compulsion. Um, so I think that's why this is useful, irrespective of whether you agree or disagree with um, the issues that were being discussed. Um, so that's my takeaway, and I'll have more soon.